Hi Cancer, it's Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and we are about to do a reading for your sign today. That being said, this is not a personal reading for you. It's a general reading for the sign of Cancer. Therefore, it may resonate with you. If it does, that's awesome. That means the cards are speaking directly to you today. If it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay too. It's just not your reading. I highly recommend, whether it resonates or doesn't resonate, that you check out the other signs in your astrological chart. Cross-watch those signs. It's very, very helpful because your sun sign, which today is Cancer, is how you receive information from the world. Your moon sign is how you feel about your world. That's how this information gets processed. And then your ascending sign and your, or your rising sign is how you spit this information back out to the world. I did a really cool video called Tarot 101 that is on my website under the resources in the playlist. It will help you understand your tarot card reading um, a lot better and understand the zodiac signs associated with it as well. Um, uh, cross watch those other signs and if it resonates with you great if it doesn't that's okay too what else oh yeah man you guys thank you so much for all of the personal readings that are just flooding into my inbox i am just overwhelmed and i'm so humbled that y'all trust me to do readings for your personal lives um, that being said also for 40 bucks we can hook you up just like this just for your situation just for you. You can schedule an appointment at TaurusStarTarot.com. Super easy. Choose your day. Choose your time. I'll show up. The cards will show out and we'll do something just like this, just for your situation. All right. What else? Um, I think that's it. So let's get started. So you come into this reading as the Prince of Pentacles. This is a card about planning for your future. This guy's job, you know, the, the Prince of Pentacles, which is also the Knight of Pentacles in other decks. I'm using the Tarot Illuminati, by the way. This is a brand new deck for me, and I freaking love it. So the Prince of Pentacles being the Knight of Pentacles. Knights are action-oriented cards, right? Except for this Prince of Pentacles. He is Earth Energy, right? Pentacles are Earth Energy. And Earth Energy is very slow-moving energy. This guy's job is to slowly walk the perimeter of the kingdom, right? And to um, evaluate everything. He's going to walk the, the fence line. He's going to um, make sure the crops are growing. He's going to make sure the workers are doing what they're supposed to do, that everybody has the tools and resources that they need. And that being said, this is a card of planning for your future, right? Not just planning for your future, but a card that you have assessed your future. You've made a plan and made a checklist, crossed the T's, dotted the I's, and you're about to implement it, right? So you come into this reading um, planning for your future. However, the Seven of Swords indicates that that there is some, some kind of shady behavior that you're trying to come to terms with, right? I don't know what it is or how it is, but this is a card about betrayal and deception trying to get away with something, keeping things on the down low, and just basically, you know, shady behavior all the way around. This, the bridge between planning for your future and the shady behavior is the Eight of Cups. This Eight of Cups is about disappointment and abandonment. It's about feeling hopeless and aimless and potentially contemplating walking away from the entire situation in search of something better. The Three of Pentacles in indicates that this, these three cards here are about um, teamwork and collaboration. So this shady behavior and your, your sad feelings, right, have to do with teamwork and collaboration. Somebody or something in your life that you're just really not sure you want to carry into your future with you. The Ace of Swords tells me that at some point during this mental and emotional process here, you, you, you get some mental clarity. You have a breakthrough and you start to see things clearly, right? All of these cards are emotional and mental processes, by the way. Each and every card is an emotional and mental process, just for the record. So you have some mental clarity. You have some kind of a breakthrough about this situation, about planning for your future and not sure if you want to take somebody else into it with you or not. You have some mental clarity. This mental clarity brings about a sense of justice. Justice is about fairness. Well, it's about justice, obviously, but it's about fairness and truth. 
cause and effect and law, right? Karmic law can be actual physical, you know, um, physical law. So you've had some kind of a revelation about fairness and justice and truth in regards to this situation right here. And the Six of Swords says that you're going to take a regretful but necessary transition out of this energy. So this top row right here tells me that you've been planning for your future. There is some shady behavior going on with somebody that is in your life, somebody or something that is in your life, and you're not sure you want to carry it into the future with you. You've had some mental clarity and epiphany about, about justice, about, about how to handle this situation. What this is, how you're handling this situation, is that you're going to, to transition out of this life cycle, right? You're going to transition out of this relationship that you have, whether it be love or some kind of partnership of some sort, a business relationship, but you're going to transition out of it. It's a regretful transition because you obviously have feelings about this situation, but in your best and highest good, you feel like it is best if you just transition out of it. What we have in the next row is judgment. You have made some kind of huge decision in your life, right? Up here with the justice and the ace of swords, the mental clarity, the transition. This is the decision that you made. This decision is um, um, huge. It's a huge life-changing decision. And you know, we can make decisions all day long and roll them around in our head until the cows come home. But until they're actually executed, they're absolutely meaningless. But this card right here says that, that not only have you made a decision, but you're going to execute a decision. This decision to transition away from the, 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 the sadness and this, this, this shady behavior right here is going to change the trajectory of your life, right? When we execute a decision in our life, it points us in a different direction. And we no longer live the way that we used to live because we've implemented a decision in our life to live differently. This is going to cause a rebirth in you and, and change the direction of your life. The King of Wands comes in and says that, that, that you're feeling really good about this decision. You feel like this decision is for your best and highest good. You are confident that you made the right decision and you are um, absolutely in control going forward executing this decision. Strength card comes in and says, um, not only strength and courage and inner strength, right? But this is a card about trusting also, trusting your path, trusting yourself, trusting that you have made the right decision in this situation. I mean, she's petting this lion like he's a house cat and he's purring up on her like he's a house cat. There's absolute trust between the two of them. And that is the root of personal um, strength of inner strength is trusting that you have made the right decision. The nine of wands comes in and talks about having courage, right? It reiterates the whole courage thing right there. So not only do you need to trust, but you need to have actual courage to go forward with what you're going to do. Um, it seems as though that, uh, you know, you're, you're, um, like we all do when we make big decisions, particularly when it means leaving somebody that we've had the feels for in the past behind, it takes a lot of courage to do that, a lot of courage and strength, right? Here you are in the Four of Cups, the Four of Cups, the Four of Cups, just evaluating, reevaluating, contemplating and reevaluating the entire situation, right? So you've made this decision, you're, you're going to execute it, and now you're, you're, you're contemplating every angle, every avenue, every way this decision could affect your life. The Nine of Swords comes in and says that you are really, really contemplating this whole thing right here. Like I said with the Courage card, it's painful. It's painful to leave somebody that you've had the feels for behind and make the judgment call that they are no longer good for your future. So there you are in the Nine of Swords thinking about just that, right? The Nine of Swords is also a card of, of a painful lesson. So perhaps you're looking back on all of this as a painful lesson, which is a good thing, Cancer. It's a good thing because 
the word lesson is in there. It's a painful lesson because if we don't learn from the karmic situations in our life, we can never move forward into the next phase of our life. A lot of people spend their life in counterclockwise motion because they don't learn a lesson from the experience that they're going through right now. And, you know, if you believe in reincarnation or not, um, you'll come back and you'll repeat the same freaking thing over and over and over again until you get it because the universe does not release us to move on to something different until we've learned what we're supposed to learn from the cycle that we're currently in. So here you are, uh, the, you know, the extreme definition of the Nine of Swords, I mean, to the nth degree, the extreme definition is depression, nightmares, intense anxiety, and despair, and a painful lesson, right? So that's what you're going through right here. Remember, all these cards are emotional and mental processes. So that's what you're going through right here. However, Temperance comes in and says, while you're in this Nine of Swords moment right here, while you're in the Four of Cups, contemplating and reevaluating everything in your life, Temperance comes in and says, while you're in this Nine of Swords and this Four of Cups energy right here, you find purpose. You find purpose. You find um, balance in your decision to move forward. The Eight of Wands comes in and says that you're going to do quick, quick action, right? You're going to take quick action, speed, action, potentially traveling maybe, um, but it's definitely about movement and swift change. So this is you executing this decision right here. The Star card comes in and says, reiterates the whole trusting yourself thing right here, right? The star card comes in and says hope, faith, purpose, renewal, and spirituality, right? Just like this temperance card said that you, you're finding purpose in the decision that you've made in your life in general. The star card reiterates that. You're finding purpose, right? You have faith that you're on the right track. You have hope in your faith that what you're doing is going to bring renewal and, and a sense of spirituality in your life. This card is saying that you know that you know that you know, and it's, it's, it's reassuring you that you know that this is the right thing for you to do. We have the alchemist, which is the magician, right? This says that you're manifesting. You are manifesting. What are you manifesting? You're manifesting the Prince of Cups. This is the, this is the Knight of Cups, right? This is a card about romance and charm. It's also a card about a knight in shining armor. So what you're manifesting, I think, I think what, what you, you are is your own freaking knight in shining armor. That's what I think this card is about. I think that you, you know, a knight in shining armor, that's, that's a savior, right? He swoops in and he scoops up and he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to save you. You know, the whole Sleeping Beauty thing or the Rapunzel, the knight in shining armor, right? A savior. I think you are your own knight in shining armor. And this is what you're manifesting right here. You're manifesting your own love. Okay, you're manifesting the understanding that you and only you are your only true source of stability and independence. The Hermit card right here takes you into an energy of soul searching, doing some introspection and some soul searching, right? Being alone for a minute. The Hermit card is awesome because this is the only place in all of this dimension that nobody else is allowed. Nobody can share this moment with you, this hermit moment when you're inside and you're soul searching and you're asking that source that is there for you when you go to be quiet and seek wisdom and inner guidance, whatever that is for you, that's who you're, that's who you're spending time with right there. And you, you're, you're holding up the lantern and trying to light the path forward, right? And you're contemplating. Well, what are you contemplating? Well, the next cards that come out say that you are contemplating some kind of a commitment, 
some kind of a commitment in regards to a new beginning in a new journey in your life. How committed are you to leaving all of this behind and going forward on a new journey? You know, the fool card, the fool card, you can't, he has nothing with him. He has a walking stick and a satchel and his dog, and that's it. That's all he has. So when you go into a new beginning and a new journey in your life, you have to go naked. You have to go with no expectations. You have to go with no baggage. You can't take anything with you, physical, emotional, mental. You can't take it with you. You have to start fresh and clean and new. And this is what you're contemplating right here in regards to committing to this new journey in your life. You're contemplating, can you do it? Is it, is it really, really, really what you want to do? Do you want to do it alone? Do you want to leave all of this behind? You're giving it one last good go round before you actually take the next step off of that cliff into your new journey. Now the Hierophant comes in and talks about commitment, right? You're contemplating in this hermit mode if you're committed to this, are you? Cancer, are you committed to taking a new journey and a new beginning? Are you committed to leaving the bullshit behind? Are you committed to a new, a new journey? Are you committed to all of this, Cancer? This commitment card right here is, is, is that. Are you committed to leaving all of this behind? Are you committed to hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life? Are you committed to being self-sufficient, to being your own savior, to being your own knight in shining armor? That's a totally a personal thing right there, right? But you're going to go through this, the, these emotions. Just know that you will. Okay, what's next is the Princess of Pentacles, right? This is the Page of Pentacles. This is the manifestation of a new opportunity in your life. And manifestation, you know, we have manifestation back here with the, with the alchemist, with the magician. Manifestation is extremely important, and it's thrown around a little fast and loose on YouTube, right? Manifestation is a tool that we are given by source, whatever that is for you, to be able to bring things into our life. It's a very, very powerful tool. You are what you eat. You become what you think, right? So this manifestation of a new opportunity for you isn't just going to pop out of the clouds and fall into your lap. I mean, it might, but it's probably not going to. What this is about is you pulling it towards you, sowing the seeds, thinking about it night and day, doing the legwork that needs to be done in order to bring this to you. So you're manifesting a new opportunity. The Four of Pentacles comes in and says that um, this opportunity this opportunity is going to give you control, stability, and security in your life. Crossed by the Five of Wands. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Five of Wands. The Five of Wands is about, it's about disagreements, competition, strife, tension, conflict. But it's also about an increased focus on your goals. And that's what this card is saying right here is that, is that by manifesting this new opportunity for yourself, it could be a new financial opportunity as well. By manifesting being a pentacle, by manifesting this new opportunity for yourself, you are increasing your focus on your goals and you are moving forward in your future with laser focus, laser focus. How do we know that? Because the world card comes in. The world card is all about completion, integration, accomplishment, right? This is one cycle completing, a new life cycle beginning. This is about integrating all of these thoughts and emotions, all of these processes right here in the hermit mode, integrating them together, boxing them up, 
putting with them where they're supposed to be and using the collective as a powerful tool by which to step forward. Okay. It's about, and, and once you integrate this, the completion is the completion of one life cycle, the beginning of a new life cycle for you, right? It's an accomplishment of what you've learned and what is about to begin. You're going to take what you've learned into your future with you and hopefully apply it to your life so you don't repeat the same mistakes over and over and over again. These new life cycles, like I said earlier with the world card, these, these new life cycles are not a gimme, right? They're earned. We can only go into a new life cycle when we have completed the past, when we've integrated it and when we've learned from what that karmic situation is trying to teach us. So this world card is awarded to you to start a new life cycle. But notice this world card doesn't come in until the, until the very end of this reading because you have a lot to learn, a lot to deal with, a lot to process, right? And if you never get here, you will continue to repeat these same things over and over and over again until the universe deems you worthy of a new life cycle. And that's what's happening for you right there, Cancer, a new life cycle. <clears throat> this new life cycle is leading you to something from your past. Maybe you're going back home. Maybe you are um, reuniting with somebody or something from your past. This, this Six of Cups, the, the true definition of the Six of Cups is reunion, reconciliation. It's about nostalgia and memories and, and innocence, right? So perhaps you're going into this new life cycle of yours with a feeling of clean, pure innocence because you're taking this new journey right here, right? Remember I said go naked? <laughs> Don't really go naked. You get arrested, but go naked right? And maybe the six of cups, that's what that's, maybe that's what that's talking about, a feeling of innocence and purity. Maybe, maybe you're going, uh, you know, maybe the bus ticket that you buy from the guy at the counter reminds you of your Aunt Susie. It, it's, it's a lot. It can be as simple and basic as that silly example, or it can be as, as very serious as moving back home with your family or reuniting and reconciling with somebody from your past. You have to put that wherever it goes for you. But this, this, this new life cycle that you're beginning with the world card. Oh yeah, I wanted to point out too that the world is number 21. It's the last lesson of the major arcana. I'm about to put a video out about Major Arcana, but it's the last lesson in the Major Arcana, which allows us to start a new life cycle. So the Six of Cups, something nostalgic, something, something warm and fuzzy from your past, right? It's leading you to something warm and fuzzy from your past. And the Ace of Cups comes in and clarifies that and says that you are going to be filled with not only overwhelming emotion, because look, that's what this means. I mean, I don't mean you're going to be like an emotional wreck, but this Ace of Cups right here, the water is just flowing out of this cup and water is emotions and feelings, right? So whatever this is, this new life cycle for you, it has you feeling very emotionally, you're, you're overflowing with emotion about it, right? Good emotions, not bad emotions. You're overflowing with emotion about it. And it is um, also indicative of self-love as well, right? Self-love. Now here's a little pocket that came out that is interesting. It's a little, little side note, little sidebar right here, right? So what these cards are saying is that at this particular time, when you're entering this new life cycle and something warm and fuzzy from your past is surfacing and you have overwhelming emotions about it, right? You're feeling real fuzzy, warm and fuzzy and feely about it. What happens at this particular time is you reflect back on this toxic energy right here. You reflect back on it. Maybe you're thinking, God, I wish I could have taken so-and-so up here with me. I wish this would have worked out. I do really have, have sincere feels for this person or this situation that I left behind. 
you're reflecting back on this situation with this devil card because it's a, it's a negative, right? It's a negative. And the devil, the devil card is an exemplification of human nature. It, everybody has a shadow self. Everybody has self-depraving thoughts in their head that oftentimes keep them bound to the throne of toxicity. Everybody has a propensity for an unhealthy attachment somehow, some way. Everybody can be prone to addictions. Everybody can have unhealthy restrictions in their life. And all of us, I don't care how prudent you are, all of us are filled with sexuality. Okay? So this devil card is you reminiscing about this past that you just left behind. You're in the hangman mode for a minute, right? You're pausing, you're surrendering, you're throwing it all around in your head a little bit, but you're going to let it go and you're going to come out on the other side with new perspectives because you see this brand new beginning for your life right here. You see this, 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 this beautiful golden opportunity that you have in front of you that is only given to you because you have ended this toxicity in your life. The two of wands says you're going to be able to plan for your future, right? Future planning, progress, decisions to make, discovery to do. You're, 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 you're discovering and researching and getting ready to start your future. The two of pentacles comes in and says you have balance, stability, prioritization in your life. The Ten of Pentacles, you're going after it. You're going after it. You're not screwing around anymore, Cancer. You're not screwing around anymore. You're going after what you want out of life. And the King of Swords comes in and says that you're, you're cutting off all of the bullshit, even though you gave it a thought, right? You're, you're reminiscing about it. You're thinking about it. You went into hangman mode, wondering if you made the right decision, all of that blah, blah, blah that goes with reminiscing about leaving somebody or something behind. But the King of Swords says, nope, you know that you're on the right track. You know that you've made the right decision. You know that you have hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your future. And this King of Swords just reiterates, all of the decision-making process that you've gone through here and says you're cutting out the bullshit and you're going forward strong. You're going forward strong with clear thinking, intellectual power, authority in yourself, and speaking your truth about who and what it is that you want to be. That's an amazing reading, Cancer. It kind of touches a little bit on um, the reading from last week. I think it was called... Uh, the bullshit start, stops here or something like that. But there was a huge, a huge thing in your life that had happened. And you were, you were in the decision-making process to leave it behind. And here you are finishing that decision-making process and actually leaving it behind. Most of my readings so far for the month of February have been about people leaving things behind. I think it has to do with that big old full moon that we had, right? The full moon indicates, um, brings forth, not indicates, brings forth um, endings, right? We cut things out, things end. It's um, clear thinking, just like the moon card, right? It, you kind of squint through that window of life and you start to see things for what they really are. You know, the moon card... Um, is about is about squinting through the window and you know the shadow out there next to that tree is it real is it not real is somebody in my backyard and the moon card is about you squinting through the window of life and real hard focusing and seeing things for what they really are and this new moon this new moon this this full moon that came through i think has everybody squinting through the blinds of their life and and seeing things for what they really are and a lot of people are making decisions to cut baggage out of their life the fool card cut the baggage out of your life leave it on the curb take your carry on and go right Wow, Cancer, that's a great reading. Well, thank you for spending time with me. If you like this video, like it. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I have utter, utter loyalty and, and, and gratitude 
for all of my YouTube subscribers. Thank you very much for watching this video and namaste.